Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again this is Jeremy Smith. Not long ago guys, we took a look at Sigma's 85mm 1.4 lens and I kind of gave you guys a quick little demo because I didn't have very much time with the lens. We took a look at it on the Canon 6D and I gave you a few little images and kind of an initial review. But I wanted to come out and actually spend more time with the lens and as you guys know I'm a Nikon user so I obviously want to be able to get my hands on a Nikon copy. So today we're going to be doing a little shoot, uh, not exactly sure what's going to happen today because our weather hasn't been the most favorable, but we're going to give it our best go. Today I'm going to be using the lens on my Nikon D800, so I'll be a lot more familiar with the performance of it. And by the way guys, I am using a lot of additional equipment, I do get questions about what I use to film videos, so I will be placing uh, a, just a list in the description below so you guys know exactly what equipment I'm using, and if you have questions about that, let me know as well. Anyways guys, without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the Sigma 85mm 1.4. This lens makes quite a statement on a camera. Even on a large body like a D800 with battery grip, it's very, very large. 86 millimeter filter size. It is very good to see some weather sitting on this lens though, because as it turned out, we ended up needing every bit of the ceiling we could get today. All right, so now we're gonna to get to a little bit of shooting here. Um, as I mentioned, I have the 85 millimeter on my D800. Uh, right now we're using a single light, a Profoto B1, and I'm using a uh, Okta here. The skies are very, very sort of overcast today, so I decided to put a CTB uh, gel on the uh, Pro Photo, so that way we kind of match the color of the ambient light. And I'm doing just a little bit of flash. So I'm gonna actually show you guys what this shot is like with flash and without. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna just kind of shoot here and we'll see how this goes. So, ready? all right, you ready? All right. So, okay, so let's see here. All right, guys, so now, first off, I'm going to take a couple shots. Uh, right now, I am at F2 and 200 ISO at 1 125th of a second. And I'm going to take a few shots without the flash, and then I'm going to do a few shots with flash. So you guys can kind of get an idea of how this looks both ways. Um, even without the flash, of course, it's still very apparent that this flash is extremely, extremely... Uh, not flash, sorry. This lens is extremely, extremely sharp. Today is so overcast though that the light kind of lacks a little bit of direction. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to add a little bit of light to Cody's face to kind of give us some dimension. And okay, let's see here. So shooting very, very low power on our flash. Um, I'm on like a four on Pro Photo, and I forget what power setting that is. I'll pop it up on the screen so you can see. All right, Cody, I'm gonna just step back a little bit. I'm gonna drop down so I can kind of get a little bit more of that dramatic sky behind you. Okay. Wow, yeah, looking good so far. I mean, very, very, uh, <laughs> very very sharp lens I mean it's beautiful it's a beautiful beautiful lens okay let's see here okay step back a little bit for me yeah there we go so because so I'm trying to get that sky in the shot Okay, turn away from me, there we go. Okay, everything's looking good so far there. <laughs> That's all right. Yep. It's okay, it's not gonna be, all this is not gonna be in there. This is just like. <laughs> the world will never know. Shooting this thing wide open at 1.4 is kind of tricky. Obviously, as you can imagine, uh, you end up in a situation where you can easily, easily 
uh, overexposed. Um, or you can just end up in a situation where you have this razor blade depth of field. So you have to really be careful with focus. But I'm not doing too bad with it actually. I mean, even at 1.4, this thing is just absolutely, it's absolutely razor blade sharp. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's the, the bokeh on this is nice as well. Uh, according to my Sigma rep, Sigma was actually trying to emulate Zeiss whenever they made this, and it shows. Because you get this beautiful bokeh, but you get this outstanding sharpness as well. And that's not an attribute you typically find in most lenses, um, at least not both. You usually get very good bokeh or very good sharpness, but it's very rare in my experience to see that happening in the same lens. Okay, so, wow. We're going to go ahead and change the scene up a little bit. Um, it is starting to rain a little, so we're going to move, up, move things around a little bit and we'll see what else we can do with this. All right, guys, well, this is kind of the end of the shoot. Um, the weather is really about to just, it's about to storm in any second. So we're about to get out of here. We've got way too much metal equipment. We don't want to get struck by lightning. Um, although the tripod's carbon fiber, so Don is safe. But, uh, yeah, but, but we're, I'm not carrying the light stand. That's true, I'm not carrying the light stand either. Um, anyways, though, we've kind of got to the last set. We've lost a lot of light. Um, we're shooting at F2 and 400 ISO right now, 1 1 25th of a second. I kind of found this random sort of rail thing and I thought it would work well with the shot or with the shoot rather. So we're going to give that a little bit of a go and then we're going to, we're going to get out of here where it's safe. And there was the lightning. Okay. So <laughs> I'm actually backing up a little bit now to get more of a uh, full body sort of shot of Cody. Look towards the light for me, Cody. Sure. I'm actually feathering this light off quite a ways. I still want to get plenty of the sky in the shots. Even in these low light conditions, this lens seems to be focusing uh, reasonably well. Let's see. There's like some geese or something that are like trying to get the heck out of Dodge right now. Okay, I'm going to get a couple of uh, closer shots. I'm going to kick this modeling light up so we can so I can see how to focus a bit better. Okay, so what's happened now is these lights have come on, and I don't know how well it shows up in the video, but there's a lot of like re light reflection off the concrete behind Cody. So I'm going to get some closer shots of him and kind of get a little bit of that reflection in the back there. Yes, hold that right there, Cody, looks good. I'm still using the CTB uh, gel because I really, really want to have a nice blue sort of look to the sky. Okay. All right, look, look towards me, but don't move your body. Turn your head more, Tor towards me more. More. More towards me, there you go. Okay. Oh yeah, that one right there could be your new Tinder profile pic. I need another one of those. <laughs> See, some ladies might be watching this video. No, just kidding. There's no, there's no ladies. There's no ladies watching this video. Sorry, buddy. This channel subscribers, they're like, uh, like they're like 88% guys or something like that. So, but anyways, maybe, maybe once I give you the pic. 12%, dude. <laughs> yeah. So if you are one of the 12% watching, that's a lady, then. Yeah, you know what's up. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Okay, let's see here, there. Okay. All right, so a little lower angle here. Turn your body towards the light. Okay, turn your feet too. There you go, just, there you go. Okay, stand up just a little bit straighter for me. There you go. Okay, give me that serious look. I know you've got it. I think we have what we need. So we're gonna go home where it's uh, safe and dry. And I will catch you guys back in a dry place in just a moment. 
Okay guys, so now that we're in a nice warm dry place and I'm not in the storm, I can give you guys a few of my thoughts about the lens. First of all though, thanks to Don and Cody for coming out and giving me a hand. Uh, Cody even uh, actually makes a pretty good model. I hope he finds some good tender dates uh, thanks to my photographs. But anyways guys, uh, the first and most obvious thing about this lens is that yes, it is pretty large for an 85mm. And we kind of talked about this whenever I looked at the lens initially. If you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out because I spent a little bit more time talking about the physical characteristics of the lens. But yes, it's absolutely large, uh, no doubt. The thing about that though is that this lens basically has kind of a no compromises uh, sort of de uh, design philosophy. So that explains why we see such good pers uh, performance out of it. One thing in addition to the tremendous amount of sharpness and great bokeh that I saw is the lack of chromatic aberration. You know, there's practically no color fringing. And this is something that is a huge difference compared to the Nikon 85mm 1.8G or Nikon 85mm 1.4G that I'm used to using. So big, big win there. Now, the size of this lens, frankly, doesn't put me off a whole lot. I mean, in photography, obviously there's lots of big lenses. I'm used to using lenses like the 70 to 200 28 or the 14 and 24 28. Uh, heck, even Sigma's other art series primes like the 15 and 35 1 4, those are both fairly large lenses too. However, the only time I'm a little put off by the weight of this lens is oftentimes I find myself shooting alone. And one of the main reasons why I oftentimes use an 85 millimeter lens over, say, something like a 70 to 200 28 is that I don't want to have to worry about trying to hold the camera with one hand and hold the reflector with the other and, you know, not have to worry about a very large and heavy lens to have sort of one-handed. Now this lens does make it a little harder to do that, but I don't think it's an absolute deal breaker for me because I don't find myself shooting in that situation as much because these days I find myself using off-camera flash a little more than a reflector, but your mileage may vary on that. As far as the cost of this lens, you know, it's like, uh, I believe $1,200 USD. So very, very competitive. That still puts it, uh, still puts it below the price point of the Nikon and Canon offerings. I don't shoot Canon guys, um, but maybe I can talk my friend into letting me borrow his uh, 1DX uh, Mark II, an 85mm 1.2, and I'll see if I can get you guys sort of a Canon comparison in the future. If you guys haven't already, check out my website. Uh, you can see more of my work there, jsmith-photography.com. Also, check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, at PhotogJTheGreat. And guys, if you have any questions, write me in the comments below. I love hearing all your feedback, and hopefully in the not-so-distant future, we'll be testing some other lenses as well. Until next time, this is Jeremy Smith, signing off.